Hello, my name is Cheryl Kirby Stokes and I am the Academic Opportunities Coordinator for the Gatton Academy of Mathematics and Science in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And one of the things that we try to do for our students is provide them unique opportunities, utterly unique, that they're not going to get in a regular high school setting. And so one of those this weekend is going to Oak Ridge National Laboratories. And this is one of the premier research laboratory sites in the United States. So we take the kids down the night before and then we have a full day tour the, the next day. Well, we're on a bus, and judging by the traje trajectory of the uh, sun and the farmland, we're going southbound, so I'm assuming we're going to Oak Ridge. I've always thought that nuclear engineering is something that's interesting, so I'm just kind of pursuing that with this trip. I wanted to go to learn more about what's at Oak Ridge. I mean, I've heard of the area before, you know, a bit of Knoxville, I've heard people talk about it. Uh, my dad actually worked at Oak Ridge for a few years, so. I want to learn more what it's about. I'm looking forward to this because, A, there's a lot of really neat technology that I feel like it will be good to develop a further information basis for if I want to understand okay. it better in the future. B, I've been told by friends who have gone that it's a fantastic trip and a wonderful experience. So. I'm actually looking forward to exploring it because I think there's a chance that I might work in a similar facility in the future. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the Know, these compounds won't work or this is not the right way to make uh, this mixture uh, so we can sort of we can save time and not have to spend uh, you know months or decades in a laboratory. Somebody gets good results and they write a paper and they're like hey I've got all this data that I generated you know maybe a petabyte of data that would a petabyte's a huge <laughs> number right yeah this file system is 32 petabytes and this is our temporary file system. Uh, we've got a lot of graduate research positions so uh, definitely keep that in mind uh, as you go forward in your career you can you can get a summer gig here and work on something really, really cool that's not happening in the world. So, when it's time to get the uh, fuel out, what do you do? Well, you take this pole and you just poke it, and um, it just falls out the back. And uh, there's a, a funnel made out of, con of concrete. Uh, that's not the best idea because when those things come out, they're 546 Fahrenheit and they'll kill you in uh, under 10 seconds. So you don't want them to break apart. Watching the hydrogen vibrate around carbon gives you a much more sensitive response. If you have a fixed clock, in our case it's 100 nanoseconds, and you measure a longer distance, then you can measure a velocity more accurately. It says we're running at uh, uh, basically a thousand kilowatts. I think, I don't know if you know, you, you, when you don't ask questions, I keep talking. That is a danger here. And then we apply two gigapascal of pressure and the magnetic structure changes. And this gives us an idea. A little device is inserted in the beam tube and it contains liquid hydrogen. And that doesn't tell you that. And uh, there the neutrons moderate with the temperature of the hydrogen, and then we get obviously cold neutrons. So this reactor is an extremely high performance reactor, very unique design. If you measure a one centimeter by one centimeter square for one second, if you could see the number of neutrons going through that little hole in a second, you'd get three times ten to the fifteenth. 3 million billion neutrons every second. So that's what this reactor was built for. So this is a project we did with ONR, the Office of Naval Research. And so basically ONR won 
wanted to fabricate two robotic arms that could be launched from a submarine in order to defuse mines and retrieve items from the ocean. We 3D printed a house in different sections on this printer. Our 3D printer has a nozzle at the end which heats up the pellet feedstock material to a semi-liquid form. Before you get to the nozzle, there's a screw and an extruder. I liked it a lot. It was pretty cool. I'd like to like come here sometime again, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Morning, we got to see the big supercomputer. We got to see Titan. And um, while he was talking about it, he said that he needed some software engineers. And I thought that would be really fun to do, since that's what I'm going into and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he agrees. Yeah. I think that the 3D printing lab was probably the best, since it was the most easy to understand without ha already having had physics. I feel like this would have been a more beneficial trip after I had physics. Huh? I get the gist of a lot of it, but didn't understand the complex details. I would agree. I thought the 3D printing lab was very interesting because of that. I also thought it was like more hands-on than the other ones. Yeah. You could actively see what they were doing and like touch the products, which you definitely could not in the other labs. Yeah, don't want to be touching the neutrons. That's a bad decision.